Hey folks, today we're going to cover bookings with me in Microsoft 365. Some of you may be familiar with the bookings app product service, and it's used for primarily for small business, but it's used across Microsoft 365 fully configurable calendar where I can set different bookings policies, schedules, and even different types of appointments uh, assigned to different staff so that individuals can book time uh, based on services, based on staff, based on needs without necessarily having to go through all the hoops of emailing back and forth to figure out who the most appropriate person is um, and when the person is available. Bookings looks directly at the configured staff's Outlook calendar to make sure that availability times are accurate and set. More recently, Microsoft has rolled out Bookings with Me, which for those of us who use uh, services like Calendly, um, allows us for allows us to have a very similar experience in Microsoft 365 for our own personal calendars, rather than having to go through the configuration steps to set up bookings as a whole or have to have administrative privileges to be able to set up bookings for my organization. I can set up bookings with me and be able to generate a link that people can use to book time one-to-one -one specifically with me. Today, we're going to go through the setup of bookings with me. So uh, navigating to Outlook on the web, and one big disclaimer here, uh, there are some administrative policies that need to be set up by your administrator in order to make bookings with me uh, available to you. If you do not see these options available to you, those steps have not yet been taken and you'll need to take that up with your administrator. Going to my Outlook on the web, um, I have a create bookings page. When I move over to my calendar view of Outlook on the web, I have create bookings page available to me. And if I click on create bookings page, I can get started with personalizing my bookings page. Bookings with me does not allow a lot of available options for configuration. I can choose from one of about 10 preset images um, to update my bookings page. Given the fact that we're an IT company focusing on technology, we'll use our nice little ones and zeros background that they've provided. Uh, in order to start using my bookings with me, which by the way is in preview from Microsoft at this point in time, so some of this may change as Microsoft rolls this towards general availability. But in order to get started with my bookings with me, I need to create a meeting type and I can create one of two types of uh, meetings either public, which people, as I share my bookings page with them, they're going to have the ability to select from those meeting types or private ones that I need to be able to share specifically to people. We're going to start by creating a public one. Um, and this, what we're going to do is we're going to create a technical support session booking as a meeting type. You can categorize your meeting types uh, for those of you who prefer to use different categories on your Outlook calendar to be able to quickly and easily color code and organize your calendar events, you can have a calendar category automatically applied to a specific meeting type. So if this happens to be a technical support session and I have a category for client technical support events, I can actually have it automatically categorized in my calendar for me when somebody books that. I can add a description to be used for technical support session bookings, and I can add a location. If I need to add a specific location, if we have physical locations that I might be in for a given, um, a given meeting type, I can add that in here, and I can also default it to be a Teams meeting. If it's a technical support session, I'm probably going to want to be able to do a screen share and see the person and speak with them. I default all of my meetings to Teams meetings anyway. I can set the, what the duration is, and in this case, we're going to set that as a 30 minute. I'm going to say that this is a public, it appears on my bookings page, and I can customize my schedule so I can see what my regular meeting hours are, or I can set custom availability hours. And if I choose to do custom availability hours, I can make this type of meeting available only during a specific date range, or I can make it so that on specific days, these can be booked during specific times. Now, I don't want to be doing a technical support session on a Friday, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that so that someone cannot book it there. And maybe in, in this case, I also want to make sure that no one can book it on a Wednesday morning 
for whatever reason that happens to be. So I can set those custom availability hours um, that people are allowed to book the time on. We're going to set that back to 9 a.m. And we're going to move to advanced options. Under advanced options, I can set um, some of my preferences here. So I can set a specific buffer time before or after my meetings. So if someone books this time, it will only allow them to book it if I set it to be, for example, 15 minutes, it will automatically add a 15 minute buffer window before and after the 30 minute window that this meeting type has been set for, making it a total of one hour booked in my calendar. This can be very helpful given the fact that you are handing over control of your schedule to bookings. This allows for uh, some automatic buffer time to be included on either side so that you don't suddenly find that you're in back to back meetings all day long because people have been uh, leveraging the booking system. You can limit the start time for this meeting type so that people aren't again are not able to um, book back to back to back so that I'm limiting that start time to 30 minute intervals. And I can set the minimum and maximum lead time and what this means is the minimum lead time is the minimum amount of time or the earliest opportunity somebody has to submit a booking for this meeting type is one hour. It's currently 10.53 a.m. The earliest somebody is going to be able to book me for is 11.53 a.m. because they need to have a minimum lead time of one hour. Maximum lead time is how far in the future they're able to book for. So in this case, the default is 90 days. Someone cannot book a technical support session on my bookings with me page four months into the future because the maximum amount of time they can book ahead of time is 90 days. When we're done setting up our meeting, I can add additional meetings simply by clicking on the plus sign and continuing on. Or I can um, or I can use a current meeting type. Copy a link to that specific meeting type so I can send that off to people and say, here is the technical support session. Here is the meeting type for a technical support session. You can share this around to your organization so that if anybody needs to book time with me for technical support, they can use this link. I can share this meeting type. I can duplicate it because maybe this is a good template. This is what I like because I've set specific custom availability hours, buffer times and minimum and maximum lead times. And so what I want to do is I want to duplicate that to save myself some additional time. I can make this private. Or I can delete it entirely. I can also click into it and I can update it as required to edit it. Maybe, for example, I forgot to put some additional buffer time on and so I or I put buffer time on and I don't want that anymore. So I'm going to remove my buffer time and I'm going to hit save. I can also share my total bookings page. With other people by copying a link, sharing it via email, which will open up my outlook, or I can directly add it to my email signature. And if I click on that, it's going to open up my Outlook web signature that's stored in Outlook on the web so that I can update that and have that available right here. Um, all I need to do is check this box, include a link to my bookings page in my signature, and people will have the ability to click on that, view my availability, and book any of the available meeting types um that i've set up with me i've hit save so there we go this is how we set up uh, bookings with me for the very first time i highly recommend if you do a lot of scheduling on your calendar if you're a user of, of services like calendly um, that you take a look at using bookings with me there's a lot of advantages to having it directly integrated with your outlook calendar as well as having it all under the account that you already use uh, to log into all the other uh, Microsoft products and services.